uh, this morning, um, we uh, tested all our players that uh, were not uh, injured. We had a combine, essentially. We were able to measure the 40s, the uh, L drill, the vertical jump, the broad jump, did a bunch of measurements on our guys so we could have a really good foundation of their numbers. Um, so when we get back here in January, we'll be able to test them again and then obviously test them after spring football to see our improvement in those areas. But um, first off, I want to uh, commend our, uh, our players. Uh, they did a great job with the, uh, the COVID protocol. Uh, we did an unbelievable job. At no point were we uh, ever in a position where we had to postpone or forfeit a game. The only snag that we ever ran into is whenever we had, I think, four or five uh, assistant coaches uh, for roughly 10 to 12 days. That was a challenging part. But uh, my hat's off to our kids for at least being able to, to handle that properly, and they did. Uh, we've got a long way to go, uh, as we all know. Um, we weren't competitive this year. Um, the, the major issue, and, I, and I've said this uh, numerous times, is uh, our three best football practices that I've been a part of were spring one, spring two, and spring three. And on our, spring, our fourth spring football day, uh, we were told that we had to exit the building. I thought we made really good strides in January in terms of discipline uh, and how to do uh, to do winning football on a daily basis. I thought we made improvements in February and I felt it. It's uh, the first time that I felt uh, us doing things the way that, that we needed to do things. And uh, unfortunately, whenever we were sent home and we were doing everything online, we fell back into some horrific habits. And uh, I made it quite clear that, uh, you know, there's a process of winning. Uh, there's, a, there's a way to go about winning. And uh, it, it doesn't happen overnight. You need to learn it. You need to embrace it. You need to love the process. And eventually that process will, uh, will love you back. But, uh, you know, right now that, pro you know, when you're not loving the process, you're always going to get what you deserve. And uh, that was quite clear uh, this fall. Uh, I'm glad it occurred. There was a lot of positive that came about it in regards to being able to play young players, being able to have this year essentially get everyone's year of eligibility back. And uh, if you told me, if you asked me uh, in confidence, in private, uh, did I think this was going to occur? And I would have absolutely said yes to you. Um, I knew exactly where we we're at. And, uh, you know, we, we need a full year of preparation, a full year of weight room development, a full year of discipline uh, to, to put ourselves in, you know, in competitive uh so we can go compete. I mean, we weren't even in a position where we were competitive and um, that needs to change. And just like I said, it starts with me. Um, I'm going to be the most disciplined person you've ever seen. And, and our kids are going to follow and we're going to, we're going to get this thing uh, right. Coach, how hard was it? I mean, you guys wanted one last shot and especially one last home game and so what was the conversation with the team afterwards? And what was kind of the disappointment that, man, that ended at that Akron game that, you know, we t you talked post game, it wasn't fun. Yeah, it wasn't. And uh, the, the positive about this week is, um, you know, I talked to Chuck Martin a couple times this week and um, probably the, the, the two conversations that I had with him just uh, um, reaffirmed what we're doing. And he goes, Scott, your first year there, you know, it, it's, it, it's, um, it's a honeymoon. Your second year will be the hardest year that you've ever been a part of ever. He goes, and don't think that your third is going to be, a, be easy either. You know, he said it how it is. You know, he, he, he walked into a situation very similar to us. And he started out his third or fourth year 0-6 or 0-7, something ridiculous. And he said, just keep recruiting, keep building the culture, keep bringing people in that love Bowling Green and that are into your culture, and it'll eventually turn. It's not going to happen overnight. And the thing that we were able to really do with our kids this week is, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, I think Miami of Ohio, when you watch them on tape, you can feel their culture. They play so hard. They play so connected. 
and and our kids were able to watch you know those guys play on tape and i thought it was great for our kids and you know i, I kept saying to these kids i go chuck martin his first three or four years there was four and 30 or something ridiculous like it and no one remembers that I mean, no one remembers that they are a well-built super good culture and you could see it on tape and that's where we want to go and that's where we're going to get and again i wish i could ma wave a magic wand and and fix the whole thing overnight but that isn't happening and it's going to get right but it's going to be a methodical process to get us there scott on, that, on those lines part of the equation is retention you have to get the kids you have to build them and then hopefully you you know win down the line um when you have a season like this that was as hard as it was, you guys didn't even have a lead in the game, how do you keep kids from getting disaffected when they're frustrated, their families are frustrated, you know, they see all the stuff on social media, how do you guys keep everybody on the same page? Is there even a way to do it? Yeah, you just gotta reaffirm what we're doing, tell them the truth. Um, you know, I the, the 220 class that we just recruited is a bunch of high character guys that, um, they get it. They knew what they were walking into. Our 21 kids, there hasn't been a snag one bit so ever. I mean, we've recruited the right kids with the right families and they know the vision. And uh, will there be people that leave and come and go? Probably. And I think there could be, you know, some older kids and all that. But uh, for the most part, uh, I think they see the vision. They understand it. Uh, they understand that uh, COVID-19 did not help our process. We we got robbed essentially, you know, seven or eight months of, of discipline and hard work. And uh, they, the kids that we've recruited and the kids that we are recruiting that will sign on Wednesday, they get it. They see the big picture. They know where we're going to go. They believe in our staff and we'll get there. See, you're in the car. Are you out recruiting? And you thought you were going to be at a game on Saturday. Now, what does your Saturday look like? I wish I was recruiting. <laughs> I wish I was out recruiting. It's crazy. No, what we're going to do, what we did today is uh, we, uh, we met with, uh, well, we, we had our combine with our team. Uh, we had recruiting meetings this afternoon. We're going to have dinner with uh, the team at 5 o'clock. And then uh, after dinner, uh, there's going to be meetings all day tomorrow with our with our players and uh, uh, kind of laying the foundation of what we're going to do in January, uh, the do's and don'ts of, uh, of December when they're home. And uh, these kids need to go home, though. I mean, this has not been easy. Like, uh, I kind of commend uh, Halfley, uh, the guy at Boston College, for sending them home, even though they were in a bowl game. I get it. If, 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 if I'm beat and I'm tired and I'm had enough, I can only imagine what these kids are going through. So they need to go home. We need to get our minds right. We, our staff needs a break. And then uh, we need to attack it like we've never attacked anything in our entire lives and just get it right. Scott, from my estimation, most of winning and losing in the MAC is developing kids. How much of that development is tied in the stuff that we don't see from January 6th or whatever until the start of practice in early August, how much of that is contained in that time period that is completely behind closed doors that nobody sees? It's, I think, Nick, you couldn't have said it better. I, I've said to our kids this, because I've got to watch it. This is an accountability league. It's a discipline league and it's a locker room league. And in my opinion, it, it all begins with, you know, recruiting the right guy, obviously, but development, development, development. And it is a 365 day uh, a year process. And there's no doubt about it. Every single thing you do from the weight room to what you eat, to going to class, to, to attacking the meetings and not just checking boxes, going in there and, and, and getting something out of it. And, um, that's this league. If you can be super accountable to each other, super disciplined, find a way to trust each other through all the work that you've done and have some love, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to win in this league. It is an accountability league. It is. I, you watch just us, which is, which we're not very good right now. We beat ourselves left and right. And you watch in this league, people just beat themselves. If you can teach your team, how not to lose good games, you're gonna, you're gonna be super successful in this league, in my opinion. 
with Dave Clawson's model, if you are following that, um, his second and third years were the hardest to the hardest two years in his tenure. And, you know, in the third year, Dave had to weather the storm. People were calling for him to be fired, et cetera. Do you expect another hard at least 12 months here? I think we'll be better. Do I think that we'll be to the moon? No, I don't. Um, I think it's going to be, um, just like you said, we got to stack classes, Nick. You know what I mean? You have to stack classes and retain those classes. The 220s, are got to come in here and stay. The 221s have got to come in here and stay. The 222s have got to come in there and stay. And then I feel after you get through that 222 class, you're going to feel healthy. And uh, I think we'll be much better. I think we'll be competitive. Um, do I think that we could put a man on the moon yet? I'm not sure about that. Just because of you need, you need a couple more classes, I think, to, to, to really feel comfortable with it. Um, then with Matt, you mentioned that he was still injured. Is he going to have to undergo surgery at some point this offseason? No, not at all. Um, the passing game, how much of the back to the drawing board will you guys have to go, considering it was, it was a guy that you knew well? Um, obviously, there's more that goes into it than just the quarterback, but I, I can't imagine you were, ter you were particularly happy with the way it looked this year. No, I wasn't, and he needs to improve. And... Uh, um, you know, we're going to have a very competitive room in there next year, which is going to be great. We've got uh, – um, we're going to have a really healthy quarterback room, which I'm excited about. And uh, he needs to play better. There's no question in my mind. I've watched every single rep, and uh, there's uh, – just like I said to you many times, uh, there were some things that he didn't do right. There was things that the offensive line didn't do right. There was things that the receivers didn't do right, and it was uh, – Everyone just kept switching, uh, like the quarterback and the line would be completely in sync and the receivers would be off. The receivers would be completely in sync and then the quarterback was off and it, everyone had their turn at it, every single dude. And when you watch it, what makes you throw up is there's guys wide open, not kind of open, wide open, like you could punt the damn thing to them. And uh, that's the frustrating part. And what we're going to do is when you really, really look at the whole picture of it, it's technique, it's decisiveness, it's being precision, and it's discipline. It's complete, uh, complete discipline. And um, that's going to change. We will be a good throwing football team. I'm not worried about that. But uh, there's a lot that goes into that. There's a ton that goes into it. Heck, we're, we got to do the same in the run game. I mean, it's across the board, Nick. I mean, it's just not the pass game. It's, it's, it's the complete overhaul of the offense in terms of execution. But everyone has their hand in it. You'll see a, a heck of an opportunity. Ten guys do their job, one guy doesn't. Then the next play, the other ten does their job and another guy doesn't do it. And that's all accountability, discipline, all the above. Technique, coaching, and um, it'll get better. This season, it's been loss after loss and tough moments. Um, with this signing day coming up next Wednesday, how, I guess, nice is it a positive moment to turn the page and think of the future? We've been doing that. I've been doing that for a while here now. I mean, to sit here and, and, and for me to say, uh, just like I said, I publicly, I would have never said it. We knew. I mean, <laughs> The, we knew the entire time how this thing was going to go down. You know, I completely knew. And uh, it wasn't shocking. And um, was it difficult? Yes. Um, but I took it in a total different way. The, the battles that, uh, that I was trying to win, no one could see. And that was the approach. And that's going to be an approach here for a while in January is we got to win battles that people don't see. And once you get that foundation of winning battles, of really important stuff that you know the outside world doesn't see you start to to get it so we got a lot of work to do in that area and uh, you know my biggest push with our kids is that every single thing matters and we pick and choose right now on our team what matters and when you pick and choose you're gonna you're gonna do exactly what we did every single thing if we like it or don't like it is important and it's got to be done well and we pick and, we're picking, we're picking and choosers right now. And 
you know, that's why we're not very good on the field right now. As brutal as this was at times, you guys got, what, 40 plus freshmen into a game this year. How much can that make a difference, even if these were obviously not particularly close football games? It was awesome. It was great. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited that this year didn't affect eligibility. I mean, you know, if we had played this whole year, we would have been in the same spot that we're in right now, and they would have lost a year of eligibility. This is this is bonus. This was this was preseason 101, in my opinion. I mean, it was an opportunity to get a lot of people in, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, experience, uh, a lot of experience for Matt to 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 get this uh, out of his system in terms of he hasn't played in a long time. And he really found out really quick that your footwork, your rhythm, your tempo, your body position means everything. And once you do it, when, when you do it once in a while, he looks great. When you don't, you're not going to play well. And it was an eye opener to all our quarterbacks in the room, the young ones going, oh, my gosh, I understand now why Scott's so anal about this and that. Because in their mind, they look at Matt and they go, man, he knows how to do it. And now they got to go watch him and go, oh my gosh, the, the details and the, and the attention to detail and every single thing and everything that we talk about in that room matters more than ever, ever night now because they got to watch, you know, when, when you do it, it works. When it doesn't, you stink. And um, it's, it was in, invaluable lessons, in my opinion. Painful lessons, but invaluable. 